You know Bitcoin. Huh? Literally, you know Bitcoin. Mm. You bet you really know Bitcoin. Mm. The Bitcoin for now is no longer the Bitcoin you know. It has changed. It has changed into its opposite. Why? Why it turns into the opposite? The invention of Bitcoin is not merely a technical innovation. Its birth timing and technological designs aim for an ideal and revolutionary mission. To help others to get rid of and solve both laws of current financial system, which are made by too big to fall organizations, and rebuild a new trustful world. Back to the 2009, just after the last notorious financial crisis, thanks to blockchain technology, Bitcoin was created by an unknown person or a group of people using the name Satoshi Kinamoto. As a new proper currency, it has provided a 2K decentralization and peer-to-peer -peer network, which means technically users as individuals have absolute ownership safely for their process of Bitcoin without intermediaries. In other words, there were no middlemen such as central banks making military policies, managing the whole country's money flows, nor financial banks storing and transacting your savings. So, in the initial ideal cryptocurrency world, your digital currency is entirely yours, which would not be manipulated by any other financial factors and organizations, and would avoid the current type of financial crisis. However, for now, in 2021, Bitcoin has almost lost itself. Ironically, as it has been widely accepted among the public, technically its blockchain essence has not changed. But practically, its financial operations in the real world have betrayed its technological designs to the opposite. <coughs> the very obvious trend is organizational centralization. Including breakages, big business giants, and central governments. Let's check them out one by one. Breakages. Since not everyone is technically able to use and treat Bitcoin by coding, in order to narrow technical trading gap in the real world, a business platform appears. Brokerages. They create their transaction platforms, issue their own digital currencies, build up their own wallets for customers. This scenario is quite familiar. Bingo! They are kind of a combinative intermediaries of traditional central banks, brokerages, even plus commercial banks, but without any official supervisions. Nowadays, the general public can't treat Bitcoin without them. Even some brand has become a star in current stock market in the United States. Half waves of Bitcoin at large result from nothing but these breakages, who make a lot of money from dynamics of Bitcoin price and aim to organize more individuals to make more. Particularly after 2010, every time the price of Bitcoin drops into a new level, you will hear many crazy promotion and analysis from these greedy and enthusiastic head players. Clearly, the main reason for its existence is as new centers, which betray Bitcoin's decentralization property, is a technological business development demands to geeks, hacks. Or any IT nerds using peer-to-peer -peer transactions in backend by coding is not a big deal. Whereas for original users, the easier to use, the more popular to use. Then let's say big business giants. Even the general public can be insane in trading Bitcoin in last more than ten years. How come business corporation keep away from this frenzy? In fact, business corporations are more sensitive to financial dynamics than original individuals, especially those big giants. Facebook. Facebook used to announce its liberal project, which aimed to issue its sovereign digital currency in its global communities, but encountered fierce disapprovals from current powerful governments almost all over the world, such as the United States, UK, Germany, France, and Japan. Yet. Never big giant stories easily end in front of juicy opportunities of huge wealth. The historical turning point happened after the pandemic. 
which has struck the global economy seriously and exacerbated current flaws in the financial system. This accidental crisis has surprisingly changed the people's belief on Bitcoin and digital currencies, which as the most potential hedge against the current financial risks have gained more weight over the goal. In this context, many big giants and corporations can't wait to actively operate their business with Bitcoin. You probably heard of the most influential entrepreneur, Elon Musk and his doggy Kong. In the world, this top rich man in the world, as a high-profile new center of Bitcoin, has made a great amount of money from trading and manipulating on Bitcoin. Besides this high-profile hub, in fact, PayPal, Walmart, Amazon, and many other giants and rising stars have been actively participating into this new game of throne. Will they become new centers? Absolutely. Very soon. Then the government. Will government's hands off on its frenzy, which is supposed to subvert its financial systems? Of course not. But what common does reveals a very realistic phenomenon. Technology can do anything? Smart gigs. Don't be naive. You will pay price if you look down complicity of the world. Here, let's see how different governments worldwide react and how powerful governments literally have turned the Bitcoin into its opposite. At the very beginning, Although Cyprus' financial crisis in 2012 to 2013 had helped Bitcoin to increase values and trading price among a hand of gigs, the most governments basically ignored its promising influence. Or we can say the most governments have no idea what such fintech creature is. Gradually, as more hubs and bubbles in Bitcoin's price have been creating by raising breakages and rampant black markets, and more people crazily rush into this new millennia, many governments started to prohibit its trending. Interestingly, those bans should have increased the price of Bitcoin in short time, due to the rarity of Bitcoin as a financial product, which in some way has enhanced its financial value of it in long term. All plus above is quite logical until one turning point happened after the pandemic. In late 2020, the central banks of Sweden became the very first authority globally to issue a digital currency, which will help the country to become the world's first cashless society. And in early 21, China announced the digital currency electronic payment. Meanwhile, China heavily restricted Bitcoin's trading. The central governments in Sweden and in China directly take advantage of its blockchain technology and its financial functions to make their national sovereign rise. And digital currency sovereign rise entirely consistent, which means Bitcoin or digital currencies has turned from anarchists into formal members of governments. In other words, the traditional centers have become the new centers. The reason behind in Sweden and in China are navy technique that, on one hand, domestically, as long as they gain authorities on digital currencies, they will be free to redesign and use this new tool at their wishes. On the other hand, in international financial competition, they could take advances and advantages before the United States government to leave this new game, or use this popular anarchistic weapon to play against the leader of current international financial system, the United States. The Fed in the United States also participated into this Game of Thrones. So far, Bitcoin is legal in the United States. In the face of geopolitical competition, the Fed in the United States is working actively on the same thing to turn the Bitcoin entirely into its opposite. Interestingly, for now, the United States government is shaping Bitcoin trading into a tax revenue tool in the governance of the Fed. As long as traders pay taxes, it holds an ambiguous attitude with both allowance and criticism on money laundering and black market trades. Even like stocks, the Fab's policy has become an influential hammer to make impact on its price. 
No, no, no. Not the previous Hajj week, but the general week. In the mid October 2021, after Fab announced to allow release digital currencies, ETFs, the price of Bitcoin went up to sixty thousand dollars. Techners always argue tech is mutual. It is. Without open-minded tech innovations, never could we live in this age of information. But the technical innovation are only the first step. How to build up a subsequent reasonable industries and business connections with fully considerations on human nature and a complicated human world will determine how an ideal tech innovation can last and be used for best effect, rather than be wasted or used reversely.